Good morning, everyone. We're so glad to have you through live stream. Even though you're not here in the sanctuary, we love you, we appreciate you, and we're glad you're with us. And today, uh, I'll make the announcements, and then we'll get on with our service. And it says, following the deacons and Pastor Mark's meeting, it was decided to continue the suspension of in-person services and events until further notice. The number of active COVID cases, hospitalizations, and associated deaths are not good, and they continue to climb. These numbers will be mo monitored, and once the trends reverse, the deacons will meet again to discuss possible changes in our approach. We will continue to live stream our Sunday morning ser worship service on Facebook, and our Wednesday evening Bible study will continue on Zoom with the recording posted later on Facebook. Please continue to join us in our live st stream events. Pray often for your church, the deacons, and your pastor for God's guidance in future decisions. Take time to check on our elderly and shut-ins during this time to ensure their needs are being met. And don't forget our children and youth in their prayers. Please contact Pastor Mark or the church office for any prayer concerns or other needs that you may have. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Be kind, be respectful, and show compassion in all that you do and say. May God continue to bless his church and protect each of you in the coming days. In Christ, Pastor Mark. We appreciate <clears throat> the work of the tech team to keep everything running smoothly for the live streams. Anyone who would like a CD of any of the services please call the church office. We appreciate Josh and Sarah providing the beautiful music that they do for our services. September 22nd and through October 31st is the 40 days for the Life Fall 2021 campaign. We are being asked to please pray during these 40 days for the Planned Parenthoods and the abortion clinics across the U.S and all over the world that would have a decline in women coming in for assistance to terminate their unborn child. Prayer is powerful, and it is our greatest weapon in defending and protecting the unborn. The Christian Ed Board is planning to be involved with a community truck or treat, trunk or treat event at the Lewis County Park on October 30th. If you would like to donate candy for this event, you may drop it at the church office. In preparation for the Christmas season, the Friends Auxiliary of William R. Sharp Jr. Hospital is collecting coloring books and crayons. The coloring books and crayons drive will end on December 3rd. Staple free coloring books are preferred. Any donations of these items can be brought to the church and they will be taken to the hospital. If you prefer to order online, you can do so through Amazon Smile Program, which will ship directly to the facility. The wish list can be accessed at uh, smile.amazon.com. HS Charity List is 56B5K1MHU1PZ. Amazon Smile donations also result and a percentage of the purchase price being donated by Amazon to benefit the hospital's friends auxiliary. And, you know, with, with the pandemic the way it is and with all the turmoil that's going on, I just keep remembering the first two most powerful commandments, and that's to love your Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second one is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I know when times are bad, sometimes it's hard to, to think straight. And about four years ago, to keep that in mind, and about four years ago, <clears throat> a Christian sister of this church read this poem to our Sunday school class. 
And it's, it took, had such a powerful purpose in my life that I made a, asked her for a copy of it, and I keep a copy in my Bibles. And I periodically, I look at this because we all sin, we all have weaknesses, and we all do get down in the dumps when things aren't going good. You know, it's just, it's just human. But here is, the, here is the prayer. And then once I read this, I will go in, we will go into the Lord's Prayer. And it's the name of the prayer is live the way you pray. It says, I knelt to pray when day was done and prayed, O oh Lord, bless everyone. Lift from each saddened heart the pain and let the sick be well again. And then I woke another day and carelessly went on my way. The whole day long I did not try to wipe a tear from any eye. I did not try to share the load. I did not even go to see the sick man just next door to me. Yet once again, when day was done, I prayed, O oh Lord, bless everyone. But as I prayed into my ear, <clears throat> there came a voice that whispered clear, pause, hypocrite, before you pray. Whom have you tried to bless today? God's sweetest blessings always go by hands that serve him here below. And then I hid my face and cried, Forgive me, God, for I have lied. Let me but live another day, and I will live the way I pray. And I keep that with me because it just hits, it hits the heart. It's a very, I feel a very heavy poem. And now let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you, Vicki, for your opening this morning. And just to let you know, those that are watching the live stream, we've we've run into some technical difficulties to see this morning and uh, we're trying to work through those, but uh, we appreciate what this what the tech team does each week, uh, week in and week out. They're here uh, doing doing everything they can to make sure we get on the air. And uh, title of my sermon today is "That's Not Fair," and I guess that kind of goes with the this morning. What's happening this morning as well? It's it's just not fair. But uh, anyway, again, we appreciate what they do. And we, uh, we welcome all of you that are here watching uh, our live stream this morning, those that uh, may be watching it, the recording later on today. We're just glad that you can be a, a part of this with us this morning. And uh, we hope that there's uh, something today that uh, you would receive a blessing from. Uh, as Vicki said, we're still suspended in-person services, so uh, we've Vicki and I are both looking out on an empty sanctuary and uh, that's not the easiest thing to do but I know behind that camera there's many more that are that are watching so again we're so happy you can be with us this morning uh, just to touch on a couple prayer concerns and, and actually praise reports uh, we had three ladies in the church that had some pretty serious uh, cancer surgery this week and uh, associated with the church and church family and uh, we had Lynn Faulkner, uh, Bonnie Grog, and Linda Haynes all had some pretty serious surgery. And I think we can just praise God this morning that uh, to this point, all three are, are home and, and doing well. The reports to this point are very good. And we just uh, thank God for uh, his care and, 
and his healing in each case. And we just pray for, for each one of these ladies and their, and their families as they continue to uh, battle this cancer. I uh, also want to mention that uh, Angie Riddle, who is uh, Helen Riddle's uh, daughter-in-law, uh, has COVID and in, uh, various, uh, in a very serious situation as well uh, in the hospital. Albert Moneypenny also has COVID. And uh, so we've, we've got COVID uh, within our church family and, and we just, uh, just like we do in the community. And uh, it's a very serious thing, and uh, we just pray for these individuals, for everyone that's dealing with COVID themselves or their family or friends, uh, we just lift them up as well. Let's uh, bow for just a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this opportunity of, of sharing your word this morning. Father, we know that your Holy Spirit is with us, and even though we're dispersed in our, in our own homes uh, this morning, Father, we just know that we are united through your Spirit, and we are your church, Lord. And uh, Father, I just pray your continued blessings upon us. I pray that you would uh, strengthen us. I pray that you would protect us through this uh, COVID pandemic. I pray, Lord, that uh, we would still go about your work as, as you would have us to do. And I just pray that all things would uh, glorify you, Father, that uh, would be pleasing to you and according to your will. And Father, I just pray that you'd be with me this morning as I, as I bring the message, Father, and try to share your word. Father, I just pray your blessings. I just pray, Father, that uh, the words that leave my lips would fall upon open, open hearts and open minds. And, and Father, that your spirit would, would work accordingly in each life. Again, Lord, we... We lift up the ones that have been mentioned this morning that are, that are hurting physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Father, those that have financial problems and relationship issues and work issues. Father, whatever the need may be this morning, we just lift them up. And Father, we just pray that you would be rounded about them, Father, that you would lay your healing hand upon them. And Father, that in each situation, it would come to... Uh, a conclusion that would be pleasing to you and would be uh, something, Father, that would bless you. We thank you, Lord, again for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the cross and the work that was done on the cross. And we thank you for salvation. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and your word and your church. And we thank you, Father, for your love. And all these things I ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, like I, I said, my uh, sermon this morning is, that's not fair. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you have, have probably said those words or at least thought those things before. Uh, we like to be treated fairly. And even at a, a, a very young age, we, uh, we know what it means to be fair. Uh, we're taught to be fair when we, when we play with our friends, and in return, we expect to be treated fairly as well. Uh, Robert Fulgham, in his book, Everything I Need to Know, I, I Learned in Kindergarten. And I'm sure many of you have read this book. I've read parts of it before. But uh, he says, all I really need to know about how to live and, and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but there in the sandbox at nursery school. And these are some of the things I, I learned in that nursery school. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you, when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. And now with COVID, we wash our hands about every 20 minutes. Flush. At first, I thought that was floss, but I realize it's flush. Warm cookies and, and cold milk are good for you. 
Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw some and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. And when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic. Hold hands and, and stick together. And you know, I think there's a, there's a lot of truth to what Robert says here. And uh, right there near the top of the list is, is the words, play fair. Playing fair is uh, something that we want others to do. They, that's how we want them to treat us. And, and I think that we all try to be fair in how we, we treat others. As Christians, uh, being fair in, in how we treat others is something that we see as a, a, a necessary characteristic of our lives. And at least I hope we, we see that. But this morning, I want you to consider this. Is being fair a characteristic that, that we want to see in God? And we'll begin this morning by, by looking at Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through 16. If you have your Bibles and want to turn with me, I'll be reading from the ESV this morning. Again, Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. And these are all the words of Jesus as he's speaking to his disciples. For the kingdom of heaven is, is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went, and going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And, and he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has, has hired us. And he said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and, and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this to the last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. May God give us understanding in the reading of his word this morning. Jesus is speaking these words to, to his disciples. And he's uh, using this parable to explain the, an answer that he had given to Peter in the, in the previous chapter, in the verses leading up to our text this morning. And we need, to, uh, we need to recognize that the scenario that is described to us in our, in our text this morning is, is being used to describe the kingdom of heaven. It is, it's not a parable to show us how to live or, or how to treat others. In the last few verses of the, of the previous chapter, Peter said to Jesus that he and the, the rest of the disciples had forsaken everything to follow him. They had given up their homes and, and their livelihoods, their families and their friends. They'd given up their security to follow Jesus. 
And Peter questions Jesus, what shall we gain for our, our sacrifice? And Jesus doesn't hesitate. He, he tells the disciples that when he returns and, and sits on the throne of his glory, the 12 of them will also sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And Jesus goes on and he tells them that everyone that hath forsaken their houses and their families and land for, for his name's sake will receive hundredfold in return. And, and more importantly, much more importantly, they will inherit everlasting life. But then Jesus concludes his response by saying, but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. And that brings us to this, this morning's parable. And Jesus is using this parable to explain to the disciples what he, what he meant by, but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. Jesus tells the parable of the man, of a, the master of a house who, who goes out early in the morning to, to hire laborers to, to work in his vineyard. And a typical work day for, for field workers at that time was six in the morning till six in the evening. So the master of the house was probably out prior to, to six o'clock in the morning scouting for workers to, to work in his vineyard. He finds some and, and they, they agree to work for a denarius, which, which at that time was a, a normal daily wage. So they are sent out into his vineyard to work. Around the third hour, or what would have been nine o'clock in the morning, the master goes out again and, and he saw others standing around they were, and they were doing nothing in the marketplace and, and he offered them work in his vineyard as well and he tells them that he will, he will pay them what is right. At noon and at three in the afternoon, the master of the house does the, the same thing. He goes out and, and he still finds people that are idle in the, in the marketplace and, and he offers them work in his vineyard and he will pay them what is proper. But then again at five in the evening, with just an hour of, of work to, left in the day, the, the master of the house goes out and he finds even more that are doing nothing in the marketplace. They respond that uh, they haven't been offered any work to that point. So the master tells them to, to go into the vineyard with the others. So to this point, it's, it's been pretty much straightforward. It's, it's what we would expect. There's, there's work to be done in the vineyard and workers are hired throughout the day to complete the work. But things are about to get a little more complicated. And if we look at verse 8, we find these words. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. So the last workers hired, the, the ones that had only been there and, and working for an hour, are paid their wages first. And each received a a denarius. They received a full day's wages for, for only an hour of work. And can you imagine what must have went through the minds of, of those workers that were hired earlier in the day? I mean, they're probably thinking, wow, we've hit the jackpot. They get a denarius for one hour. What are we going to get? Two or, or three denarii or maybe even more? They see the they see the generosity of the master of the house to the uh, 11th hour workers. And uh, naturally, they expect to see that same generosity extended to them. Why, well, that, would, that would only be fair. That's how we think, too. We often think like that. We want what is rightfully ours. We, we just want to be treated fairly. Well, that, that might work within our families and at the school and the workplace and on the ball team. But as Jesus is about to show the disciples, it, it isn't how things work within the kingdom of God. 
And we should be eternally grateful that it's not. Scripture doesn't tell us that uh, those hired at nine and at noon and three are what they're paid. And it doesn't tell us if they are happy with what they received. But our text says that those that started working first at six in the morning each received a denarius. So although they, they worked 12 hours, they received the same pay as the workers that only worked one hour. And they weren't, they weren't happy about it. And they didn't remain quiet, and they, they let the master of the house know exactly how they felt. That's not fair. You've, you've cheated us. We want what is ours. But the master of the house replied to one of them in verses 13 and 14, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. And he went on further to, to justify his actions and he asked why he was not allowed to, to do what he wanted with what belonged to him in the first place. He paid these workers exactly what they agreed to before they began work. He cheated no one. He asked, do you begrudge my, my generosity? And then he concluded the parable with the same statement that uh, required the parable in the first place. So the last will be first and the first last. As I shared with you at the beginning, this uh, parable was uh, recorded in Scripture as only being shared with the uh, with the 12 disciples. And this parable, like all parables, is a, an earthly story with a, with a heavenly meaning. And we can determine most of the heavenly counterparts to the earthly individuals of this story. The vineyard would have represented Israel, and the master of the house represents God. And the workers would would represent those who, who come to believe in God and faithfully walk in obedience to Him. And those who come to believe in God and worship Him with their lives, will, they will be fairly rewarded for their obedience and their service. However, they must not grumble with other believers who, who seem to have sacrificed less, receive as great a reward as, as they do. We know that some people, they receive their salvation and become followers of Christ at, a, at an early age. And some in midlife and, and yet others still on their deathbed. Some faithfully serve God their entire lives and others may receive Christ as their savior near the end of their earthly life and only have a very short time of faithful living. Some grow their faith their entire lives and developing a close personal relationship with their Savior, while others may never have this kind of spiritual development. But once a sinner can, confesses their sin and repents and, and gives their life to Christ, their, their reward of eternity with God is assured. The biggest question, however, concerns the identification of the, the first and the last. Let's look again at that last verse in our text this morning. So the last will be first and the first last. What did Jesus mean by this statement? Who was he referring to when he said the first and the last? Well, there's several possibilities if, if we look back through Scripture. The first being the, the rich and the poor. On earth, the rich are often treated better than the poor. But in, in Luke 6, we, we read these words of Jesus, starting with verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. 
the first and the last have, have been reversed. We can also say it could be the tax collectors and sinners and, and the Jewish religious leaders. Jesus set the record straight on, on this in Matthew chapter 9. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. And it continued in Matthew 21. Which of the two did the will of the Father, they said? The first, Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. Once again, Jesus reverses the, the first and the last. And we could also say it could be the, the Gentiles and the Jews. The nation of Israel was God's chosen people. But in Matthew 8, it says, when Jesus heard this, he, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Once again, Jesus reverses the first and the last. And what about ambitious disciples and, and humble disciples? In Matthew 20, Jesus shared these words with his disciples, but Jesus called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Again, first and last are reversed. And then we have the the proud people and the humble people. At Christ's second coming, God's sovereign grace will, will humble proud people and exalt humble people. Again, the reversal of the first and the last. Now these five comparisons to, to show the meaning of the first and the last are, are all good possibilities, but they're not supported in the context of our our particular text this morning. Jesus was speaking to the, the 12 disciples. This parable was meant to be specific to their instruction. With that in mind, we must conclude that the, the parable is a warning to Peter and the others that they should not presume on God's grace and rewards. The disciples, they must accept whatever reward God graciously gives to them, and they must never compare God's grace on others to their own reward. We as Christ's disciples must do the same. We must be grateful for whatever grace God extends to each one of us, and we must not compare God's grace on others to the grace that God extends to us. And this can be extremely difficult for us because society has, has told us our entire lives that we're entitled to being treated fairly and we are expected to treat other people fairly as well. Well, that may work in our normal day-to-day -day lives, but it does not work in God's kingdom. I can find nowhere, I can find nowhere in the Bible where it says that God is fair. However, I can find numerous places where it says that God is just. And there's a big difference. Fair is treating people equally. Just is treating people right. If God was just fair, 
if God was just fair with us and, and everyone got exactly what they deserved, we would all spend eternity in hell. But our God is just, and that means if you will come to him and, and confess your sins and repent and live a faithful, obedient life for him, you can be saved of your sins and spend eternity with God in heaven. And this, this is the promise of salvation that we have because of the, the blood of Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus as your, as your Lord and Savior this morning, I invite you right now to, to begin that personal relationship with him. If God is speaking to you today, I would love to, to talk with you and, and lead you to a, a new life in Christ. Please let me know. You can, you can call me or message me. The uh, contact information is normally on the screen, on the live stream, but it's on our, our Facebook page, and I'd love to hear from you. I hope, I hope you understand this morning that our God is just. And I hope you understand because of that, we have salvation available to each of us. We just have to respond. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, I, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. I just thank you for each one that's watching today and for each family that's represented. I just pray, Father, that your word would move within each one. I just pray that your spirit would move within each heart. And Lord, I just pray that you would be with your church this, this coming week. Father, that you would continue to bless us and protect us. Father, that you would give us strength and give us courage. Father, that we might share the good news of your son. Again, Lord, we just thank you. We ask you to go with us, and we just praise you for all of your love and goodness to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for sharing with us today. I hope uh, you have a good week. You can be back Wednesday evening. We have our Bible study if you'd like to share with us then. And uh, we'll be back again, Lord willing next Sunday. May God bless.